Well, it's called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. Its name is daunting to many, and IPF remains a fairly rare condition. And unfortunately, the current prognosis for patients with this disease is those with IPF will not survive. Nearly 40,000 succumb to this disease annually. But there is some good news in all of this, however, and our next guest, Dr. Bill Bradford, a senior fellow at Interimmune Corporation, is here to shed some light on what's being accomplished to advance research and understanding of this illness. Also joining us later on in the show in our Up Close and Personal, a father and daughter here to share their personal story. But first, we want to begin with Dr. Bradford. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Danielle. It is a pleasure to have you here. Let's start with this. What is IPF? IPF is a devastating and ultimately fatal pulmonary disease that's caused by excessive lung fibrosis. Uh, in IPF, the normally very elastic lung fills with scar tissue, uh, becomes very stiff, and it's very difficult to breathe. So for the patient, this translates into uh, progressive shortness of breath uh, and an increasing inability to perform normal activities of daily living, things like walking, uh, uh, et cetera. Those are things we take for granted, just being able to do simple things like that. Absolutely, you're absolutely correct. <clears throat> and as the name idiopathic implies, the cause of the disease is unknown. Um, but despite that lack of understanding of the cause, we, we do know that IPF is uniformly a progressive, irreversible, and ultimately uh, fatal disease. And today, unfortunately, there is no cure. What are the characteristics, doctor, that make this illness so challenging to treat? We cannot accurately predict whether a patient will progress slowly, progress rapidly, and when the rate of progression may change. Over the last decade, we have made dramatic progress uh, in this front with a better understanding of the disease. And today, there's a very vibrant community that's focused on promoting disease awareness uh, and supporting drug development efforts to uh, attempt to discover new therapies. Well, IPF has been described as the deadliest disease we've never heard of. What is being done here in the United States and also globally to raise awareness and foster treatment? There's a very much a growing and increasingly active patient advocacy movement in the U.S. We're fortunate to have a couple excellent patient groups that are uh, driving these efforts to promote awareness. And in Europe, where there now is a therapy for uh, IPF, uh, there's been a groundswell of uh, awareness that's followed that. In terms of treatment, there's a single drug, perfenidone, a novel antifibrotic drug uh, that's been approved for uh, IPF. It's currently available in uh, multiple countries across Europe, Asia, North America, and Latin America. Uh, Perfenidone is not currently approved in the U.S. We're, we're actively collaborating with FDA today on uh, providing additional data to support an approval here. I think between perfenidone and a small handful of other drugs currently in development uh, for IPF, uh, we are optimistic that over the next few years there will hopefully be a therapy for patients in the U.S. Well, that would be wonderful. And, you know, here's the other thing. You talk about baby boomers, right, hitting their 50s and their 60s. Uh, is the incidence of reported cases of IPF increasing as the population ages? Yeah, Danielle, that's a, that's a great point. So IPF typically occurs in individuals over the age of 50. So uh, as we see the aging of the population, the shifting demographics, we can certainly expect to see very meaningful increases in both the incidence and the prevalence of IPF. Well, I want you to stay right there because we are actually going to talk to a patient coming up next. And up close and personal, we'll meet an IPF patient and his daughter as Behind the Mystery, Rare and Genetic Diseases continues right here on The Balancing Act. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This morning, we are talking with Dr. Bill Bradford, senior fellow at biotechnology company Intermune and medical expert on idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. We are also pleased to have joining us IPF patient Bob Williams and his lovely daughter, Heather Favor, both here to share how they're dealing and managing Bob's IPF as only a caring family can. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being here for the second half of this discussion, Doctor. And I want to begin with you with this question. From a medical perspective, how important is it that family is involved with getting an IPF patient through everything that they have to go through, living with and managing this disease? Patients with IPF really can rely heavily on caregivers and loved ones to help them manage the various aspects of their illness. 
Bob, I want to bring you in here. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. As <clears throat> Dr. Bradford said earlier, the rate of progression is different with every, uh, and every patient. Um, I'm at the point right now where I can still do most every, everyday normal function and do it effectively. How were you, how were you diagnosed and, and what, was, what was that like? Well, that was very uh, provoking and a life-changing event. Sure. I went to my uh, doctor after a brief bout of pneumonia and cured the pneumonia, at least we thought, and I went back for a follow-up. At that time, he still heard crackling noises within my lung and referred me to a pulmonologist. Subsequently, after a series of tests, including an open lung biopsy, it was determined that I had IPF. How old were you? I was 62 at the time. How long ago was that? Approximately two years. And here you are. Yep, and here and I am. so glad, mm -hmm. and I know that your daughter is so glad as well. Heather, how has your dad's illness uh, impacted your family? Well, ironically enough, it's brought us closer together. We really became a real strong unit. But IPF is a horrible disease and it's unimaginable. People just don't know about the disease. I just want to help raise awareness and let people know that it's out there and my father's suffering. You know, it's funny when you all walked out here to sit down and I looked at Bob, the first thing I thought was such a sweet spirit. You can feel mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. Emanating from him and, and, mm -hmm. and certainly I know this has to be difficult for everybody. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but the fact that you guys are together and you're a unit and you're working your way through this, I think is wonderful. I want to get some final thoughts from you and I'm going to end with you, doctor, but Bob, I want to ask you when you, you know, you see your daughter sitting here and she gets emotional when she thinks about, you know, certainly what could happen down the road. How important has the family support been for you and what would you like to say with regards to how your family well, has Well, first off, you? I'd like to thank them. Um, my wife and my youngest daughter and my next youngest daughter, I have three daughters, fortunately, and they've been just there any time I needed them. As everyone knows, there is no cure, but in the meantime, I'll just keep fighting the fight and go on from there. So I can't imagine what he's going through, um, and I certainly don't want him to worry about us. I worry about him mm. every day, every day. Doctor, we've got just about 30 seconds remaining. Any closing comments that you would like to share? get the diagnosis made earlier uh, and accelerate the development of novel therapies for this disease. Well, we hope that we've been able to shed more light on it here this morning. And thank you yes. all for being with us and sharing your thank story. You. And thank you, thank Doctor, you. for sharing this great information thank with you. us. And if you'd like additional information on IPF, visit coalitionforpf.org, also pulmonaryfibrosis.org for the latest on medical advances and therapeutic approaches. Visit intermune.com, that's intermune.com, or share with us any personal stories you have related to today's topic by visiting us on Facebook at The Balancing Act. It's the social thing to do.